Today we're gonna look at the new Mark II version of the Pergere 60mm macro lens. And the reason I find this lens interesting is that it could potentially be the world's best budget macro lens for only $200 with two times magnification. And now with the Mark II version it should also have full frame coverage at least on uh, macro distances. So let's go outside, do some insect photography with this lens and see how it does. All right, so we're outdoors. First thing I notice is that um, the aperture ring is uh, completely clickless. It's very smooth. And that can of course be great if you're doing video. Uh, but for photography, I don't really like it because it means that I very often will accidentally touch it and kind of move it where I don't want it to be. Just shot a weevil here, not sure if it is dead or just relaxing. <laughs> uh, but this is my first sample photo. And this lens comes in pretty much all available mirrorless mounts, I think. I'm gonna list them here so you can have a look. Uh, so it could be a great budget option for any mirrorless camera basically. No matter if it's full frame or a smaller sensor. A problem with the old version of this lens was that the aperture markings were not correct. And I kind of get the feeling that this might still be a problem here because uh, uh, I'm shooting at f8 now and it feels like the photos come out darker than they should. Uh, might be that I'm not used to this flash and camera and diffuser anymore. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll. I'll try to look deeper into that during this video. It's a bit cold today, but I think that's a great thing because, for example, these ants here are <laughs> extremely still. They just uh, stand still uh, for whatever reason. I guess it's because it's a bit colder. So let's try to snap some photos. Deer here. The ants really looked like they moved in slow motion. Uh, but that's great uh, because usually it's very hard to photograph ants and today it wasn't. I see a slight, slight stain of oil uh, close to the aperture ring. Uh, probably nothing, but uh, yeah, you can definitely feel that maybe this is not like top-notch quality. So it's good to know that when you do use this lens, you get slight vignetting when you use it on infinity focus. For example, now I'm taking a photo of this building here and there is a very visible and distinct vignette in the photo, uh, but it's not terrible, it could have been worse. Uh, but as soon as you just focus a little bit closer, you don't have much vignetting at all. So in that sense it's very similar to the Laowa 60mm lens on a full frame camera. For macro photography, I don't see any problems with vignetting whatsoever. Now we're focusing at infinity. And now we're focusing like five meters away. And now we're focusing at my camera, which is maybe 50 centimeters away. 
And now back to infinity. There. And you can see now we have vignette. But now we don't. <laughs> I see a crab spider. Let's try to capture it. Pretty happy with that shot. Rain is already coming. I thought I would be able to stay out a bit longer, <laughs> but I think I will have to head home very soon. But before that, I just want to try how the sharpness looks at f2.8. So far, it feels like the sharpness is really good at f5.6, but let's try it wide open and see how that looks. I'm gonna try it on these yellow flowers here. Spontaneously, I think the sharpness looks good when I look in the camera, but uh, yeah, we'll have to leave that to indoors Michael to assess in detail how good the sharpness and image quality is. I have this fly here who is extremely chill. I can almost touch him, doesn't care. I guess he is just resting from the rain or something. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's snap some photos. This fly is so cooperative that I'm even gonna try a photo at f2.8 to see uh, how the details look at full magnification. Okay, we have some sample shots and uh, it's starting to rain right now <laughs> so i think i will have to cut this photo walk short and let's go over to indoors michael and let him answer the question is this the best budget macro lens for full frame cameras in 2023 thank you for that outdoors michael i have now looked at the photos more closely and i've also made an indoors test where i compared this lens to the very excellent Laua 85mm and look at these comparison shots shot at f5.6 the first thing we notice is that obviously f5.6 on the Perigear is mislabeled it's probably more like f8 or f11 uh, but when we look at the sharpness of the lens I think it's really good the image quality overall is great and for $200, I mean, this is a really good budget option for a macro lens. In the future, when people ask me what is the best $200 macro lens I can get, no matter what camera I have, I think I will point people to this lens. Because even though it's not perfect, it's really good for $200. The biggest issue that I see with this lens is that the aperturing seems completely mislabeled. So uh, the aperture is a lot smaller than what the number says. But as long as you know that and adjust to it, it's not a big deal, I would say. The image quality is really good for $200. You almost have no vignetting at all at macro distances. There is a very slight vignette in the very corners, even at high magnification, as you can see here. But to me, it's not that big of a deal. And um, of course, you have uh, very heavy vignetting when you shoot at longer distances, at least on full frame. I mean, if you have an APS-C or a Micro Four Thirds camera, you will not see any vignetting at all with this lens, no matter what focusing distance you use. 
Other than that, I have to say that the build quality feels good. Um, there was some slight oil leakage that I could see here, uh, but other than that, it feels well built. It's made completely out of metal and it feels sturdy and it feels pretty well balanced on the camera as well. It's around 600 grams, so it's not super heavy, but yeah, you can feel the weight of it in your hand. And I would say that if your budget is only $200, you want something cheap to try macro photography, this is a great option. If you are more serious and uh, you have like four or $500 to spend, I would recommend you to get a Laowa lens, or maybe if you're using Olympus, get the Olympus 60mm. Those are better options, but they cost more money, obviously. Thanks for watching, and do subscribe if you like macro photography. That is what my channel is all about, and see you very soon again.